Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and today we are taking a look at a very cool Finnish competition and sniper's rifle. This is an M28-76, and it is not quite the final culmination of a program of developing the Mosin Nagant platform into a precision sniper's rifle in Finland. So if we go back to World War II, actually we go back to the interwar years before World War II, the Finns develop a number of different scoped versions of the Mosin. The Army and the Civil Guard both have their own development programs. Ultimately, the Army comes up with the M39PH with a big, well, small actually, but heavy, blocky, terrible scope, the Physica, uh, and the M39PH, as well as some versions with Soviet scopes and German scopes and Finnish copies of German scopes. It's a clunky, messy program, and they don't really make that much use of it. I do have a video on the M39PH, I'll link to the end, to that at the end of this in case you're interested in it, but they don't really use scoped rifles that much anyway during the war. Now fast forward to 1954 and the army starts to think about, well, maybe you should give this another try, and they do some experiments with precision rifles and don't end up adopting anything, but it does give them the idea that perhaps they should put together a better version of the standard issue Mosin for competition, and that will become the M28-57. Essentially what they do is they take an M28 rifle and put really good diopter sights on it, and they use it for international military competitions, and it, you know, diopter sights um, are going to be a lot more accurate, a lot more effective than the standard open notch sights on a Mosin. And that works fine. In fact, as they continue using them they realize that, you know what, we're not putting bayonets on the ends of these things anymore. The stocks do occasionally have some issues with warping during humidity and temperature changes and put pressure on the barrel and hurt the accuracy a bit, so they lop off the end of the stock kind of like this. Um, they give it a little bit more of a pistol grip, and that becomes the M2857H, uh, particularly used for biathlon shooting. Keep that in mind, fast forward another 10 years or so, another 8 years, and development of the new RK62, essentially the Finnish AK, is pretty well finished. The, the gun's in production, things are going well, and the Finns start looking at, once again, a sniper's rifle. And Valmet figures they'll make an AK-based sniper rifle in 762x54 rimmed, and that'll be exactly what the Finnish army needs. And they go through development of this, they build the first couple of them, everyone's excited about it, it's looking good, and they get these rifles out to test, and everything goes terribly wrong. It turns out the, the new rifle, uh, the TAK, uh, it performs terribly. The accuracy is just way below what the Finnish army needs. And so there's a little bit of a scramble of, you know, we were planning on having this semi-auto sniper, and now we can't, but we do kind of want sniper rifles, so how do we, what do we do in the meantime? And what they do essentially is they look to that M2857 competition rifle and basically reproduce it for the military, and this will be, this will be known as the M27-66. 27 because it is based on, well like the bolts and the trigger mechanisms and probably the receivers too come from Finnish Army M27 rifles, but they essentially give them a 2830 barrel, it's a heavier profile barrel than the M39s or the M27s, um, and they give them a stock again that's starting to look even closer to this. It doesn't quite have this, uh, this squared off distinct of a pistol grip, the shape of the stock is a little bit different, but it's cut off in the front here like a sporting rifle, it's got diopter sights on it, and some of them have scopes on them for uh, military sniper use, and that's what's put into service to some extent. Um, I say put into service, the Finns didn't actually go to war with these things, so they served primarily as competition rifles, but they were also available as military sniper rifles had they been needed, that would have been the standard sniper. Now fast forward another couple of years, and we've the Finns have all of those M2857 competition rifles still around that were sort of being built up as biathlon rifles, but by this point international biathlon no longer uses full power rifle cartridges, it's now using 22 rimfire, and so these 2857s aren't really good for much of anything. And so the army rounds them up and decides to rebuild them in a new pattern, the 28 76, and that is what we have here. They go ahead and put the final version of this stock on them, so it's a short stock, so there's nothing out here to interfere with the barrel, it's bedded underneath here, you've got a really good heavy pistol grip, adjustable spacer length, 
uh, it's a really nice competition stock. And these are put together by the Finnish first weapons depot, Asevarko 1, in um, Kupio, where they convert somewhere between 1,000 and 1,500 of the M2857s to M2876 pattern. So let's take a closer look at it. I'm going to start with the scope off here so we can take a look at some of the details here a little more closely. First off, the barrel is marked ASEV1, that's Asevarko 1, that's the, the weapons depot where these were assembled, and we have a serial number which on this one is 10,934. These started at 10,001, uh, and they went up to somewhere between 1250 and 1500, I'm not sure of the exact numbers. And you'll notice it is marked 28-76 there. Now this was built on an M2830 action, and we can tell that in two ways. First, it has a rear sight that's only graduated down to 200 meters, which is an M2830 rear sight. And secondly, the front sight is just a bit over a quarter inch from the end of the muzzle. On an M39 action, the front sight is set a little bit farther back, and that was done for reasons of the bayonet falling off. Sort of, long story. Uh, check my M39 video for details on that. Anyway, uh, they have gotten rid of the standard front sight post and replaced it with a competition style uh, full sight hood with a little competition aperture in there, front aperture. And that is designed to go along with a rear diopter sight, which I have right here. So they've actually milled out a little slot on the side of the action and cut out a matching slot on the stock. And this diopter sight is going to slide in right there and screw into place. Uh, by the way, one of the interesting quirks of these rifles is when they came into the US, most of them are actually missing uh, this screw that locks the diopter sight in place. And this one on mine has a screw, but it's a screw that doesn't fit because it's actually smaller than the threaded hole. So it, it sits there, but it just falls out. Anyway, um, this diopter sight is used for competition shooting. It's preci precisely adjustable windage and elevation. It's a great piece of competition hardware. However, some of these, not all of them, but some of them were also manufactured with a scope mounting base. And that is right here. So it's mounted right on top of the receiver, and it's a tapered dovetail, and it is used in conjunction with usually a four power uh, telescopic sight. So this is the most common of the Finnish used scopes. It is marked MSW Wetzler. It's a German-made scope, 4x36 power. That castle is the Finnish military property mark, and it's also serialized. The base is also military marked and marked AV1, same as the rifle. That's uh, you know military depot number one. And then it has a bullet drop compensator out to 800 meters, as well as, of course, uh, windage adjustment on the other side. The reticle, as you can see right there, is just a very simple German post. And it's held in place with a tapered dovetail, this lever, there we go, and this locking thumbscrew. You can see a little recess, oval recess cut in the scope base there, that's for that lock screw. Um, and then we have a pin right here on the side of the scope base. So the way this works is... We're going to slide it into the dovetail base, and I need to pull the lever all the way back. When the scope is all the way inserted, you can see that this lever is going to start to hook onto that pin. And when I pull the lever forward, it's going to give me leverage to tighten that base down on onto the mounting block. This pin here is just an over-travel stop if you need it, but once you have this hand tightened in, you then just screw down that locking pin, and the scope is in place, and uh, quick detachable as well. The bolt handle has been substantially modified. If you look up close, you can see they actually cut off the original and then notched in a new bolt handle. And that, of course, is there so that it clears the scope, although it actually was originally developed to clear the diopter iron sights, because this modification was done all the way back on the 2857 pattern, um, and just maintained through for the scoped rifles that would come later. The stock here is very much a heavy competition stock. It is not the least bit ambidextrous, but 
this particular one is actually left-handed. So uh, they made about allegedly about 10% of these with left-handed stocks. The action is still normal, typical right-handed, but the Finns recognize that their left-handed precision shooters, or left-handed competition shooters, uh, would need a left-handed stock. So on a side note, I am very lucky to have found this particular one available on the, the second-hand market, um, because it's really cool that I have a left-handed version that I can actually try to shoot well. Anyway, uh, the rest of the rifle is pretty standard. The original magazine is the same. The triggers have been overhauled to be very light, crisp two-stage triggers. They're fantastic. There is a rail in the bottom of the stock for a standard competition-style handguard uh, or bipod. There's another rail on the left side. That would be for a competition sling. And by the way, you saw this sitting on a bipod at the beginning of the video. This is a commercial competition hand stop and bipod. So this isn't military issue, but this is along the lines of what would have been used with the 2876 in competition. Now most of these were actually just made with the diopter iron sights. Only a smaller number of them were outfitted with the scope mounts, and those were done so that they could serve as military sniper rifles should the need arise. But the scopes weren't legal in uh, international competition at the time. So all the rifles had diopters, they could be used uh, for competition, and then some of them were also available for military service, like this one. Now let's go ahead and take this out to the range and see how she shoots. Let's, I've got a, a mini Mozambique target out there at uh, about 125 yards. Let's see if I can hit it. And that, I ganked the trigger because holy cow, I always have to remind myself how short and crisp the trigger on these is. This has a a two-stage trigger, but once you hit that wall, like you go into it thinking most in the gaunt, and then it fires, and you're like, oh, oh, right, it's a uh, 2876 trigger. Let's try that again. So there's the wall. There we go. That was a nice hit. Another hit. And let's see if I can round it out with a hit on the head part of the target. Nope. Got the target. Not the head. So, the trigger is amazing. I mean, the trigger is really quite good by military precision rifle standards, perhaps until you hit like the 1990s or 2000s. By Mosin Nagant standards, the trigger is phenomenal. So, let me get some more ammunition. All right, so that's what I'm shooting here today. Decent, not, not the world's greatest ammo. These things really shine if you're willing to hand load, get them exactly the right bullets they like, um, and, and put the time in for that. They're competition rifles, after all. I think the barrel is now hotter than any, <laughs> than any M2876 barrel in Finland has ever been recorded as being, and that's just from sitting out here in the Arizona heat. So that may impact my ability to make some hits, but we'll do some more shooting here. Whoa, and I didn't tighten that bipod down enough. Why get back on there? There we go. All right. I'm actually making, able to make pretty good hits on that mini Mozambique, hitting the head, hitting the center to reset the head. Um, I'll tell you what, I have one more cool target down there, and that is a Texas Star. Once I start knocking plates off of it, assuming I'm able to knock plates off of it, it's going to start spinning, and that'll make it more difficult. See if I can actually do it. This, by the way, is another one of those rifles that you really can't load by stripper clip. Um, the scope is quick detach. Unscrew that, pull the lever back, and the scope just slides off. I'll show you that. I'll get some footage of that after we get home because I don't want to pull it off now and perhaps lose my zero. Let's see if I can get those Texas Star plates.
It's a good start. <laughs> Ah. All right, my good start has come to an end, apparently. Four, five. The action on this is really nice and smooth. This is not your typical sticky bolt Mosin. This is a finely tuned precision rifle. <laughs> and it hits hard enough that with one shot I can knock out the last two plates at the same time. Oh. It's pretty cool. Anyone who's interested in finished rifles, these are a, a cool example that came into the US in relatively small numbers. Way hotter out here than anyone in finished camo should ever have to be in if they're not sitting literally in a sauna. So peace out. I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.